Contents Foreword by Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Vaman Goswami Maharaj Introduction by Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Preface to the fourth English edition Prelude to the Mahabharata War Chapter Summaries by Sri Srimad Bhaktivedanta Narayan Goswami Maharaj Chapter 1 Sanjaya Darshana Observing the Armies Srimad Bhagavad Gita consists of 18 chapters that culminate in the message of Bhakti, or devotion to the Supreme Lord. From Arjuna's behavior on the battlefield, it seems that he is immersed in lamentation. Krishna explains that the internal function of the soul has nothing to do with the function of body, dynasty and caste. Although, those who falsely identify the body as the self cannot understand this. As long as the living entity remains bound by the deluding material energy, maya, and misidentifies his body as his self, he is forced to undergo the miseries of lamentation, delusion and fear and so on. It is therefore imperative that he accepts the shelter of a spiritual master who is conversant with the truth. Chapter 2 Sankhya Yoga Yoga through distinguishing the soul from the body. When the living entity accepts the shelter of a bona fide guru, he realizes his own ignorant condition. He then tries to become free from the illusionary traps of the deluding potency by giving up his own conceptions and respecting the instructions of the spiritual master. The bona fide guru is a seer of the truth, a devotee who has pure exclusive love for the Lord. Therefore, he is free from the four defects of illusion, error, imperfect senses and deception. When a practitioner of bhakti hears instructions from the lotus mouth of the all-merciful spiritual master, he understands the difference between the soul and the material body. He also realizes the ill effects of sense enjoyment and becomes attracted to hearing the conceptions, characteristics and glories of the sages whose minds are fixed in transcendence. Then, by the influence of saintly association, an awareness sprouts within his heart of the need to attain conclusive knowledge of the Absolute. Chapter 3. Karma Yoga Yoga through the path of action When the living entity has heard Sri Krishna's instructions, he understands that the path of spiritual advancement whereby the fruit of one's pious action is offered to the Lord, karma yoga, consists of endeavors in service to him that are performed without selfish desire. If the heart is full of desires for sense enjoyment, accepting the garb of a renunciant is not actual renunciation, but hypocrisy, and it can never bring auspiciousness. The living entity should perform his prescribed duty as service to Bhagavan, because performing that duty for a sense enjoyment produces no auspicious result. Performance of prescribed duty, such as Vedic sacrifices, can award mundane sense pleasure but such pleasure is temporary and mixed with distress. Offering the Lord the fruit of one's actions, however, purifies the heart. It is therefore auspicious to abandon negligence of one's prescribed duty as well as abandon sinful acts and the selfish motivated performance of one's duty and instead selflessly perform that duty, offering its result to Bhagavan. Chapter 4. Gyan Yoga Yoga through transcendental knowledge 
The fourth chapter begins with instructions on the path of spiritual advancement through transcendental knowledge, Jnana Yoga. It first explains that one can only obtain genuine knowledge of the truth by receiving the mercy of Sri Guru Deva, who has seen that truth. The process of receiving this mercy is to hear from a person in a bona fide disciplic succession. That transcendental knowledge cannot possibly be attained through mundane learning, intelligence or knowledge. This chapter also explains that an incarnation of the Supreme Lord appears in every millennium. The birth and activities of the Lord are divine and it is foolish and offensive to consider them mundane. One attains this knowledge of the absolute truth in the association of a self-realized spiritual master. One gradually hears from him about the unique characteristics of communion with the Lord through such knowledge and its superiority over linking with him by offering him the fruit of one's work. A person can easily cross over the ocean of birth and death by taking shelter of authentic knowledge. The practitioner who doubts this cannot make progress. One who lacks this conclusive knowledge of the truth will become fallen and deviate from the path. He will become trapped again in the cycle of fruitive action. Chapter 5 Karma Sanyas Yoga Yoga through renunciation of action Upon attaining knowledge of the truth, the practitioner becomes qualified to connect with the Supreme through the renunciation of prescribed duty. At that time, he realizes that real renunciation means to give up attachment to prescribed action and its fruits. For one whose heart is still impure, it is both proper and beneficial to adopt the practice of offering the fruit of one's work to the Lord. Remaining detached from both the process and its result, rather than completely renouncing the work itself. Selflessly offering of the results of one's prescribed duty to the Lord bestows the qualification to attain the nature of Brahma or God, and those who know God attain peace. Chapter 6 Dhyana Yoga Yoga through the path of meditation. The practitioner understands from the instructions of the spiritual master who has seen the truth that one can only meditate on the Supreme Lord when the heart has been purified. A genuine mystic, yogi or renunciant is devoid of mundane desire because no one can attain perfection in yoga as long as one still desires material enjoyment. It is necessary to regulate eating and recreational activities to attain perfection in yoga. This perfection means first seeing the Supreme Lord as the indwelling witness in the hearts of all living entities and second realizing that all living entities exist only due to the support and shelter of the Lord. It is also clearly stated in this chapter that a devotee of the Lord is superior to a fruitive worker, an empirical philosopher and a mystic. Chapter 7 Vigyan Yoga Yoga through realization of transcendental knowledge Constant study of these instructions leads one to the firm understanding and realization that Bhagavan Sri Krishna alone is the ultimate limit of the supreme absolute reality and that 
there is no absolute reality other than him. Only by surrendering exclusively to his lotus feet can one become free from the bondage of the deluding material energy. Four types of people have no qualification to engage in worship of the Supreme Lord because they perform impious acts. The foolish, the lowest among mankind, those whose nature is demoniac and those whose knowledge is covered by illusion. Consequently, four classes of people are endowed with spiritual merit and can therefore engage in worship of him. The inquisitive, the distressed, those who desire wealth and those desirous of liberation. In this world, the devotees of the Lord are most rare. One does not attain one's eternal welfare by worshipping various demigods and goddesses. Chapter 8 Taraka Brahma Yoga The Yoga of Absolute Deliverance Only those who are exclusively devoted to the Supreme Lord can know tattvas, or fundamental spiritual principles, in regards to the Lord's featureless aspect. Brahma Tattva Fruitive action, karma tattva, the basis of this material manifestation, adibhuta tattva, etc. One-pointed devotees can easily attain Krishna, Gita 8.14. Devotees of the Supreme Lord never take rebirth, Gita 8.16. One can only attain him by exclusive devotion, 8. Point twenty-two. Chapter 8. Raja Guya Yoga Yoga through the most confidential knowledge The king of all knowledge, or the most confidential of all secrets, refers to supremely pure devotional service only. Material nature is not the original cause of the cosmic creation. Because its potency to create only comes by the inspiration of the Supreme Lord. It is foolish and offensive to think that Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is a human being or that his body, composed of eternity, knowledge and bliss, is made of five material elements, like the body of an ordinary conditioned soul. Genuine saints engage in the worship of Sri Krishna with exclusive devotional moods and Sri Krishna personally attends to their necessities. It is against the prescribed rules to worship different demigods because Sri Krishna alone is the enjoyer and master of all Vedic sacrifices. The Supreme Person accepts anything that is offered with love by the pure devotee. In the last verse of this chapter, it is concluded that pure devotion is the only means to attain the Supreme Lord. Chapter 10. Vibhuti Yoga Yoga through appreciating the opulences of the Supreme Lord. By sincerely and constantly studying this chapter, one will understand that Sri Krishna is the basis of all majesty and all potencies. The entire material universe, with all its opulences, is just one quarter of his opulence. When one attains knowledge of the Lord's majesty, one can easily understand that everything is directly or indirectly related to him. He bestows buddhi yoga or pure intelligence upon his devotees so that they attain sound understanding of tattva, fundamental philosophical principles. In this way, 
their ignorance is destroyed and they engage in worship with pure love. Chapter 11 Vishwarupa Darshana Yoga Yoga through beholding the Lord's universal form. This chapter reveals that the universal form of the Supreme Lord is external. His personal form is transcendental and human-like. Only devotees whose eyes are anointed with pure love can see the form of the Lord, the supreme enjoyer of transcendental mellows. He is only attained by the yoga of exclusive devotion. Chapter 12. Bhakti Yoga Yoga through pure devotional service. This chapter explains that Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has no source other than himself, is the supreme reality, and that he is the topmost object of the living entity's exclusive worship. One can easily attain him by pure devotion. Devotees who are endowed with single-pointed devotion are most dear to him. Those to adhere to the philosophy that the Supreme Lord has no features and that the living entity can become the Lord receive only misery. Chapter 13 Prakriti Purusha Vibhaga Yoga Yoga through understanding the distinctions between material nature and the enjoyer. This chapter gives deep insight into material nature and the conscious living entity. Through this discussion, the Supreme Lord bestows a lucid understanding of absolute principles upon his surrendered devotees and thus delivers them from the ocean of the material world. When pure devotion arises in the heart, knowledge and renunciation naturally appear there as a secondary result. However, in order to strengthen one's understanding of the true nature of devotion to him, it is still necessary to deliberate upon knowledge to attain realization of it. When a devotee understands a clear understanding of absolute principles, he becomes qualified to attain Brahma, or pure loving devotion to the Supreme Lord. Chapter 14 Guna, Draya, Vibhaga, Yoga Yoga through transcending the three modes of material nature. An analytical study of this chapter leads to the understanding that this material world expands simply by the action and interaction of the three modes of material nature, goodness, passion and ignorance. Practitioners of Bhakti Yoga can easily cross over these three modes and finally become qualified to attain the Supreme Lord. Chapter 15 Purushottama Yoga Yoga to understanding the Supreme Person. This material world extends from the lower planetary systems to the higher. Living entities are separated parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Those who are opposed to Him are bound by the results of their actions and wander in various higher and lower species of life. However, by great fortune, one may attain the mercy of a bona fide spiritual master and under his direction completely engage in the worship of Sri Krishna, knowing him alone to be the Supreme Person. The devotees' absorption in their worship makes them aware of everything. Consequently, they can easily cross over the ocean of this material world. Chapter 16 Devasura Sampada Yoga Yoga through discerning divine and demoniac qualities. 
This chapter explains the divine and demoniac natures. The living entity who is bewildered by the external, illusory potency of the Supreme Lord is controlled either by divine or demoniac qualities. When one takes shelter of a divine nature, he becomes inclined towards the worship of the Supreme Lord. On the contrary, those who adopt a demoniac nature and become averse to him go to hell. Those of a demoniac nature proselytize the theory of Mayavad, that everything is illusory, including the Supreme Lord himself. It is essential to become released from this demoniac tendency. This can be achieved by worshipping the Lord with faith in the association of pure devotees. Chapter 17 Shraddha, Raya, Vibhaga, Yoga Yoga through discerning the three types of faith. This chapter explains the three types of faith according to the association he keeps and the nature acquired from his previous impressions, a person develops faith in that which is in the mode of goodness, passion or ignorance. When the living entity completely takes the association of pure devotees of Hari, the Supreme Lord, then transcendental faith appears in his heart. He can then worship the Lord who is transcendental. Such a devotee is an actual saint. Chapter 18. Moksha Yoga The Yoga of Liberation This chapter presents the essence of the entire Gita. First, Sri Krishna is identified as the highest truth among all of his transcendental manifestations. And then the most confidential instruction is given. It is explained that one can attain service to him, which is full of transcendental mellows, in his supreme abode by following this practices in sequence. First, surrendering to him. Second, practicing of the nine limbs of bhakti. Third, accepting the shelter of bhav bhakti or pure transcendental devotion.